Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin, and today I want to talk about this photo. To the best of my knowledge, its first public appearance was in July of this year, 2022. But like all things Bigfoot, its origins are hazy. And this photo has two competing exigencies, though both origin stories agree that it is from the Four Corners area of Arizona. A Navajo reservation, in fact. And both claims also agree that this is the Mokion monster. When this photo was first uploaded to Facebook in July, the backstory was that it is a still from security camera footage, taken all the way back in 2007. Which is a bit suspicious, because why would it take 15 years to come out? And more importantly, if it was taken from a security camera which records video, why would only one frame be selected? And why would that frame be the one where it is partially obscured? As obviously, the figure would have been unobstructed merely a second or a single stride earlier. And I happened to see the post in July, when it was first uploaded to various Facebook Bigfoot groups. But the posts have since been removed, which is never a good sign. At least I think they've been removed, because I can't find them. But the uploader said that whoever took the footage did a recreation of the scene, and claimed that the creature is nine feet tall and carrying a deer. The footage, nor photos of the recreation at the scene, have ever come to light. Which is, as the kids say, sus. Fast forward a month later to August. A man contacts Kelly Shaw of the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. He says that it is not from a security camera, nor is it from 2007, though he said the location is correct. He said that the photo was taken on April 29th of 2022. His brother was driving down a dirt road when he sensed something to his left. He was expecting to see a badger, but he saw this instead, lurching up an embankment over the road. Remarkably, he managed to take a picture a fraction of a second before it disappeared into the brush. And this is the picture he took. The man's sister posted the photo to her Facebook, saying her brother saw a Bigfoot. And according to the brother of the photographer, the guy who contacted Kelly Shaw, someone must have swiped the photo from his sister's Facebook page and uploaded it to the various Bigfoot Facebook groups with an arbitrary background story involving a security camera. The brother of the photographer went on to tell RMSO, quote, My brother took this photo five miles away from our ranch. Our neighbor saw two smaller ones playing in a wash. The photo was taken April 29th of this year, 2022. 300 yards from my mom's house. It's dragging a piece of lumber from a shed that blew down from high winds. The rangers and some of the Navajo Nation's officials went snooping around for a whole day after my sister posted the photo on Facebook. He was driving on a dirt road when he saw it, and then took the photo out of panic. He thought it was a badger at first. If they, Bigfoot, have learned to start to build things, this might be the reason for the need for the wood. I saw it when I was a kid, once while exploring. Our ranch dogs bark, but now keep their distance every time when the adult ones scream. Rocks have been thrown at the dogs. Brother went to show a good family friend the photo, and her elders said the natives used to hunt them. Also, that they might be part of a shape-shifting community. That could be a reason why no one has ever really seen them. It has also been mentioned that shape-shifting animals will use the underground to move. We have been getting random people stopping by, and it weirds my mom out, so it's all hush at the moment. End quote. The person who posted this to a Bigfoot group, the guy that said the photo is from security camera footage, said the creature is nine feet tall and carrying a deer. But according to the story told by the alleged brother of the alleged photographer, the creature was much smaller, more like six feet tall, and it was not carrying a deer, but rather carrying a piece of lumber from a shed that had recently collapsed from high wind. So I guess the question becomes, which is it? Is this a still from a security camera from 2007, depicting a nine-foot-tall creature carrying a deer? Or is this a 2022 cell phone capture of a six-foot-tall creature carrying lumber, taken by a man expecting to see a badger? I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is actually my second go at a video on this picture, because I believe I was wrong the first time. I made the horrible mistake of coming to a conclusion, and then while attempting to prove that conclusion, the opposite became apparent. And that's a good lesson to any students out there. Support your claims before writing your paper. Don't write your paper to support your claims. See, when I first saw the post of this pic in July of this year, I read about how this is from a security camera, apparently aimed at this random patch of grass. And I tisk-tisked a bit about the claim of a size recreation, which wasn't shown, 
and I was highly skeptical that this was anything, let alone an alleged Sasquatch carrying a deer. Therefore, it was to my great relief when a month later in August, RMSO released a video about the brother's clarification. So I just kind of went with that theory. And I'm not even really sure why. Maybe it's because I live in dilapidated Shed Central, and I see them every day. And this line here, of the object it's carrying, I guess it just looked too straight to be something not manufactured. And so in my first attempt at this video, I set out to prove this wasn't a deer, but I'll be darned. Here's a bit from the first video attempt. But to me, it's a moot point. I've seen a lot of dilapidated sheds in my day. And an awful lot of roadkill, too. And to me, the alleged creature is carrying a piece of wood. This is way too straight to be a deer, in my opinion. Well, I don't know. I make a great effort in these videos to not be certain of anything. I do see what people are interpreting as antlers. Right here, and you know. But I'm not sold on this being a deer at all. And part of this is why I don't like doing video or photo analysis. Yesterday, I thought that this being a deer was silly, but now today, I don't know. So let's take a closer look. So here's a deer that's probably less than two years old. And if we put it side by side, well, it would have to be the other way, because if that is the back of a deer, as the straightness suggests, then we'd have to be seeing the back of the head. So let's use a different picture. So let's find a picture of a deer from behind. I bet we could even line up the neck. I don't know. That looks pretty good, actually. I don't want to alarm or excite you, but I think this is the first time I've changed my thesis during the making of a video. I think this is a deer, which of course yields more questions than answers. I went into this certain that the random person saying that it's from a security camera from 2007 was full of it, but that looks like a deer to me. Which begs the question, if that's a deer, how big is this thing? Okay. I had set to work at supporting the man who expected to see a badger theory, and that just didn't work. Which is a good reminder to do your thinking before you open your mouth. Not nearly enough of that these days, and I'm guilty of it too. But the good news is, is that this is when the photo became kind of exciting. I think this figure has to be quite large. So before we can determine the size of the creature, we need to determine the size of the deer. And in order to determine the deer's size, we need to determine its age. Bucks, or deer in general really, grow very fast. They will be about as big as they'll get by the time they're five or six years old. So they do an awful lot of growing in the first few years of life. Aging deer is really more of an art than a science because there are so many factors involved. A yearling buck, that is, between its first and second birthday, can have as many as ten points, or as few as four. So this buck has, what, one, two, three, four, four tines per side, so eight points. Meaning this buck could be anywhere from 10 months to 3 years old based on the rack alone. And then the deer's overall size is just so dependent on access to food and the quality of said food. The ideal way to determine a deer's age is simply by its size, which isn't great but still more precise than points. But that obviously won't work with the image in question because we don't have scale. But I think this deer, if it even is a deer, is most likely right around a year. Because trust me, I'm aware that this is a reach. But I can kind of make out one point here. So at least two points on each side. So this is at minimum a four point buck. Meaning it's probably pretty close to a year old. Though if anything it could be older. Because it may have more points that we can't see. And it can't have less points that we can't see. And according to the charts, a four-point buck that is therefore about a year old should be right around 100 pounds. It probably looked something like this. By the way, I'm talking about white-tailed deer here. The only other option really would be a mule deer, but for this purpose it doesn't really make much of a difference. Though in case you're curious, the main two distinguishing factors are that all the points, or tines, of white-tailed deer antlers grow from the same stem whereas the tines of mule deer antlers will fork off from the main stem. So like this Y shape here is how you can tell this is a mule deer. Also, mule deer tend to be about 20% larger. The common wisdom is that mule deer only live west of the Rockies, but I've heard that disputed in hunting circles. Rather colorfully, actually. So let's find a deer that's coming up on a year old. Crop. And let's set him beside Le Monster. Clearly, we need to shrink the 100-pound deer, 
even though technically speaking, for this demonstration, the deer isn't shrinking, the creature is growing. See, I think it has to be older than that, based on the antlers at least. We'll find a yearling buck, so a buck between one and two years old. Crop. Needs to be way smaller, or again, rather, the creature way bigger. Okay. I know the angle makes it look funny, but believe it or not, I couldn't find a picture of a yearling buck positioned as if it's tucked in the armpit of a nine-foot monster. Seriously, though, I think its chin is tucked towards its sternum, which is very unnatural for a straight-backed deer. Almost like its snout is being pressed towards its neck. So imagine in this graphic here that I just added, imagine if the nose of the deer was being pressed towards its sternum. You know, that... That's why the supposed antlers in the photo look like they're configured like ram horns. And that's why the antlers seem to be pointing down. But make no mistake, if this is in fact a deer in the photo, and if that deer has antlers, then the deer's around 100 pounds. At least. And if it's at least 100 pounds, then the creature holding it is really, really big. Like, big. This is obviously not exact at all, but just for giggles, let's find our transparent deer and line up the antlers to get our size. I think a little bit bigger. And again, the angle makes it really challenging, because I can't find a picture of a deer that is bowing forward, that has its nose pressed into its neck. But that's close enough, I think. So then, very, very roughly... I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if each leg was at least the deer's torso. Obviously, a two-dimensional picture can't account for the girth required to even carry a deer in the first place. I don't know, 500, 600 pounds? The lifestyle of Sasquatch and Bigfoot is often compared to bears in terms of its environmental requirements and resource consumption. Therefore, the size of the two should also be comparable. Granted, not polar bears. Polar bears haven't lived anywhere near Arizona, but the comparably sized grizzly bear, of course, lived in the majority of North America as recently as a few centuries ago. So something this large can, in fact, sustain itself in the wilderness of this area because it was humans that drove them out. A comparably sized creature would just have to be a little craftier than a bear. Which, of course, and not surprisingly, is exactly and entirely what the fossil record, the folkloric data, and common knowledge would suggest. Nature loves a niche, right? Just like thermodynamics, it's just one of those rules that holds true all the way down the line. If there's an opening, something will wiggle its way in, and if it's any good, it'll be extremely popular. Nature is all about niches. And North America had plenty of brawn to fill the niche. I would be very surprised if it didn't have any brain. I think a lot of Bigfoot advocates and skeptics alike make the mistake of comparing Sasquatch to the fauna of today. But that's a very dull picture. You have to go back much farther to understand the ecology that would give rise to such a creature. Just like with a human. In order to understand any one given person, you have to understand who influenced them in their formative years and the extinction of the company in which Sasquatch kept is extremely recent. So recent, in fact, that one could argue that they're basically imperceptible according to geologic time. And the first to go are always specialists, and the last to go, one would imagine, would be omnivores and generalists, clever ones at that. If we do indeed ever achieve species verification, if of course that is the case, then I think after the initial shock of them existing at all wears off, the next shock, and perhaps the truly disturbing one, will be how ubiquitous they are. Because if there's any truth to this at all, this is not a creature merely subsisting in forgotten places. It's effectively thriving right under our nose. Which, of course, these days, is the best strategy imaginable. That's why there are so many damn raccoons. Anyway, back to the photo. Maybe I should have started with this, but it really actually does give the impression of life. To me, at least. As in the fur, or what I'm interpreting as fur. It seems to shine correctly. That is to say, the shoulders, and the back muscles in general, seem to bulge enough, not only to catch the sun, but to cast a shadow that tapers to the small of the back, in that rather distinctive arrow. 
You'll see this on everything from bears to gorilla to humans. Grizzly bears in particular, because of their pronounced humps. Of course, now I'm kind of struggling to find a good picture of it, but you can kind of see it here. It's hard to find pictures like that, because it only happens when there's exposure, and those kind of pictures are usually the first to be deleted by any photographer. Unless, of course, it comes from low-quality footage, such as a security camera. As for this patch of shiny right here, it may be tempting to say that's the palm of the foot, but I don't think so. That's way too small to even be half of the foot of a creature that size. I think it's just some fur that is catching the sun for whatever reason. But see, here I am looking closer again, and... I don't know, you do kind of see a separation of where there might be toes. Hmm. Other users have claimed that this arm is way too short to be a Bigfoot, but I would note it's also way too short to be a person, and that's why I believe that the arm is extending into the brush. Another complaint people have about this photo is, why wouldn't the photographer come out and do an interview? He could easily explain everything right. Well, that's clown world talk, in my opinion. Random person photographer has his own life going on, with his own worries and troubles and struggles and little battles raging. Not everyone is eager to step into a fray that they have no interest of being in. At this point, I'm not particularly firm on either origin story. And it's nothing personal, I just don't know. It really comes down to, do you think this creature is nine feet tall and carrying a deer? Or, is it six feet tall and carrying wood? Or is it neither? Because that's certainly possible too. I seem to stay away from Bigfoot. Current events, maybe we should call it. Not by design, but because it's just so frustrating. It's so difficult to really substantiate anything. And like I just said, not everyone is keen on entering this subject publicly. It can open up a whole new and entirely unpleasant can of worms. The majority of people that reach out to me don't even really mention trying to gather evidence or presenting their findings to some internet voice. They just want their story listened to, but not only that, they want it heard. And at that, I think it's worth mentioning that both origin stories agree that the photo was taken on a reservation, and perhaps he or she is only interested in his or her community's involvement, which in this day and age is increasingly respectable and perhaps even borderline admirable. So it seems that this guy wants nothing to do with anything, outside of his community at least, and that's totally understandable in my opinion. And on that note, even just 10 years ago, I would have said that a lot of Bigfoot witnesses, or even just Bigfoot advocates, are so sheepish because of ridicule from skeptics. But I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. I think it's metamorphized into fear of ridicule from other advocates. But that's just social movement 101. And a social movement is anything that is outside that which is established. So make no mistake, this is one. And it will continue to be, until it abruptly isn't. Some people really need to chill, and realize that all the Bigfoot hypothesizing in the world is not worth surrendering our sense of common decency. So until someone comes forward for a play-by-play -play of the photo, ideally at the location, we'll never know the story, this fractional piece of an ultimate puzzle. But it's certainly something. And you can be mad about people either failing to take a picture, or picture quality, not both. The most critical problem with this photo, of course, is the lack of detail. It's so easy to say, why is it so fuzzy? It's 2022 for gosh sakes, why is it blurry? And I go both ways on that. On the one hand, yes, it seems as if the only compelling pieces of evidence are the ones that are just indistinct enough to prove what it isn't, but not what it is. And if they are clear enough, that just means there's enough detail to illuminate just exactly how they were farced. But on the other hand, I went to the zoo a while back, and I took these pictures of gorillas and orangutans, and I was between 30 and 50 feet away, probably similar to the range of the photographer here, or of the camera, at least. And the subjects of my photos were stationary, with limited obstruction. In the photo in question, the creature was moving, so I'm sympathetic to the why is it always blurry argument, and yet, the arguments against it are pretty compelling. These phones are amazing, but far from perfect. Actually, one could argue that they are as close as is definitionally possible to perfect. Better than your eye, in fact. But that's only under ideal conditions. But when they don't know what to focus on, at range, with variable lighting, and objects in front and behind, they're just not that good. In the video about the apes I took pictures of, I think I even said that if I took a picture of a Sasquatch under these conditions, which are as close to ideal as could ever be expected, 
no one would be satisfied, much less pleased. Maybe, just maybe, this is one of those pictures. You just never know. Anyway, I know these videos take me forever, but please understand that I'm always working on many at one time, so I have several that are nearing completion, and I'm very, very excited about it. Make sure to like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, make sure to click the bell thing, because it unclicks after a certain amount of time, and that's the only way to receive updates, so clicking that bell is really helpful. I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway again, and as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.